Hello everyone, I am the world-renowned historian, and you probably haven't drank enough water yet today. Let's talk about Star Trek. What's up, y'all? It is I, the world-renowned historian, and I am here with the great and powerful dust-off guy. Hey, folks. How's it going? We are back here talking some Star Trek. Um, we're, we're on the TNG project. Uh, I'll put a link to the description of the project in the video so we don't have to go through all that. But in the meantime, I told y'all we would have a, kind of a differing you know, set of guest hosts, and here's our first one, the dust-off guy. So, first of all, sir... I'd like to talk a little bit about your different relationship to the source material than myself, because obviously I know what Star Trek is. How could you not if you don't live mm -hmm, in a cave? Mm -hmm. But I'm by no means a fan. But you, you are, and certainly your brother is even more than you. Uh, absolutely, but, yeah. He's uh, geeked out on all episodes of Star Trek. Uh, I think the key difference between you and I might be that um, I've seen it all before. And uh, I have uh, personal favorites. I, I'm a fan of the original series. Uh, although Star Trek The Next Generation was always supposed to be Gene Roddenberry's baby, his sort of actual, up until he passed away, his actual depiction of uh, uh, what his. You said, ideal you said The Next Generation was? Yeah. Yeah, he was a bit. So, he was I a bet bit, a lot of people don't know that, actually. Well, he was, he was hamstrung a bit in the late 60s when uh, Star Trek The Original Series came out. Uh, he was, uh, yeah. He, he 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 ran a lot of radical ideas uh, past past the censors and onto the television, uh, but there was a lot he couldn't get away with. But by what do you mean radical idea? Like uh, Uhura, uh, a black woman yeah. serving as an officer on the on the bridge of the Enterprise, for example, would have been uh, considered somewhat radical. Isn't it interesting how like he and Stan Lee are kind of like the same dude, just in different mediums? <laughs> oh, I love that. They all yeah. just had like these like. Yeah, fucking black people, fuck gay people, we'll throw them all in. Yeah, New diversity, it's that, fine. And that's, like, it's all fine. That's, you know? that's completely <laughs> what he had in mind, was to have this, this uh, uh, I, I won't quite say utopian, but this ideal future in which humans had transcended uh, violence and, you know, nuclear war and, yeah. and hatred yeah. and that kind of thing. Uh, much like the opening, the pilot episode of... Uh, of next generation kind of addressed that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and people said that people said that of Stan Lee at the time. Like back then they were like, Oh, he's trying to, you know, be a social engineer through his comics <laughs> just because he had like like some black hero or whatever. And nowadays and we're yeah. like, Yes he was. <laughs> yeah, and right, that fucking right. worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that that will influence your commentary, I feel, a bit. You know, it'll be different from mine because you're a big fan and mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. I'm completely new to this material. You took me to task on a lot in the the opening review I did. You pointed out a lot of where I was being dumb, frankly. And I would I, I would agree just say most of your critiques ill informed. It's more about it's it's more about critiques. The critiques your criticisms were very valid because they were based on a, a lay viewer, someone who didn't know the background, and I think that's really important content uh, to put out there. But yeah. once you know some of the background, it can really change and inform how you view the episode. For example, The Naked Now is addresses content that was in a an original series episode called the the Naked Time. Naked Time, Kev, put that on the screen. Note to self. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, well, shoot, let's uh, let's jump into this thing. Shall well, without we, uh, further ado, uh, make it so. <laughs> So to speak. Note to self: Zoom in on Jordan's face. L look really satisfied. He's <laughs> just say, "Make it so. <laughs> Make it so." All right, man. We're thirteen, fifteen in. Uh, just to give a quick blow by blow of what's happening, they're rendezvousing with a science vessel. Feel free to jump in mm -hmm. if you have uh, comments. The science vessel, which was researching a collapsing dwarf star. Yes, uh, there's a super giant turning into a white dwarf. Yep. Wasn't that right? Yeah, uh, it's called the uh, SS. 
Tchaikovsky, basically. Not quite that. It's some Russian name that's similar to Tchaikovsky. Um, basically, everyone became uh, whores on the ship, and then they died. Well, they died. They died when they uh, deliberately uh, opened up the um, the air hatch. Because remember, we're about to experience a blowout, and then everybody died. They all became whores, and then they died. That happened. There's no life signs aboard the ship. Uh, they beam down Riker and the team, and uh, Data says there's indications of what humans would call, quote-unquote, a wild party. I believe this is what they would call a wild party, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's uh, some fun stuff with Data correcting Riker's grammar. <laughs> and Jordy walks in on a frozen orgy. Um, we come back from the commercial break. They're outside the Supergiant. There's good CGI for this uh, time. This, again, this show does not look like it was made in the 80s, in my opinion. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Data does an Undertaker sit-up when they're testing them for like microbes and shit. When That's his favorite ship. move, is, is to hinge on his hips. I, th I think the Undertaker stole it from Data, actually. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. Uh, Jordy gets snippy with Dr. Crusher, and he starts, frankly, acting drunk. Um, Riker has a vague memory of somebody taking a shower in their clothes, and you had a comment about this. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the event he's remembering uh, occurred in an old uh, original series episode called The Naked Time. And so he asked... Uh, uh, data to search all uh, uh, known information regarding instances of people showering in their clothes. And he said it would take a few hours, but uh, that could be uh, the very thing they're looking for. Or not. Could be a wild goose chase. It's, it's interesting that, like, the original series, everyone has this memory of it. And, like, it went, like, almost as long as Gilligan's Island, which was not that long. You know what I mean? It was Three like, years. It's this tiny little show. And the third year was twice the number of episodes in right. a single season. And this show, like, everybody involved thought it was going to be canceled in the first year. Yes, they Like, did. John Delancey <laughs> yeah. was doing a play, and he was like, I don't want to do this fucking Star Trek thing. I'm, I'm into this play. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, it, it ended up being, like, wildly more successful oh, than yeah. the original it, series. It basically rebooted Star Trek into what we know it as today. Without the next generation, there would be no uh, Deep Space Nine and Discovery and yeah. Enterprise and... Multiple movies and yeah, yeah. Kirk was the OG, but yeah, they, this all that other stuff exists because yeah. of this one. Yeah, uh, uh, just one thing I wanted to follow up on. You do see how Riker and Picard are basically Kirk made into two different people. Yeah, it's the, the, it, it two becomes, sides of his personality. Yeah, it becomes so apparent that they yeah. wanted the like professional, cool-headed captain and like the brash ladies' man. Right. There's two different people. Right. R Riker's the one that uh, ch yeah. chases uh, chases the tail, as it were. So as to we, speak, As yeah. we saw in <laughs> episode one. That's right. Uh, so let's see. Jordy walks away from his hospital bed. Leaving uh, his communicator badge behind. Yes. The, it's the little, like, Star Trek symbol yep. on his chest. Leaves it there. Um, the moment Dr. Crusher walks away from him, he's gone. Uh, let's see. Wesley and Jordy are there. Uh, playing with uh, Wesley's tractor beam that he built. Uh, yeah, he he basically invented, used micro technology to invent a handheld tractor beam. I love this character. Oh, personally. he's he's amazing. He's I don't know why people don't like this guy. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wesley is messing with people's voices using essentially like late nineties technology to like cut together like <laughs> yeah. shit that people are saying yeah. um there's a high-pitched whooshing Jordy feels really hot he has a uh, strange things coming into his mind and Yar well, well the high-pitched whooshing was associated with yeah Jordy that was a set and, up and them throughout touching the, throughout yeah. the whole first 15 minutes yeah whenever yeah. anybody anybody when Jordy touched Wesley, there was the whooshing when Jordy touches Yar in the scene you're about to talk about. Yeah. There's a hype When he's whooshing. trying to get into Yar's pants. Yeah. Dude, a whoosh happens. Yes. Yes. He even takes off his, uh, you know, when the man takes off his sunglasses, he's getting real with a girl. When he shows you his fucking cataracts. The whites of his eyes. <laughs> so to speak. Battle's about to happen. <laughs> All right. So they found Jordy. 
Uh, we're 22 minutes in. They found Jordy and they took him down to sick bay. They're uh, talking about, uh, or he was talking about wanting normal eyes. Um, and Yar is uh, very sweaty. Yar is definitely infected with whatever's going around. Uh, Troy says LaForge seems drunk, essentially. Yeah, uh, when I, be I believe that, uh, that Captain Picard said whatever's infecting the crew, and uh, uh, Counselor Troy made the comment, uh, it appears to be more like intoxication. Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, they have a little fun with data, not understanding what a needle in a haystack means. And there's some uh, talk about showering in their clothes, which I guess is an exact callback to that old show. Um, and then Picard shows up, and I, I thought uh, he was, you know, disapproving of, you know, Riker's use of his time or whatever. But uh, they, they talk about how it's, uh, you know, acting on the brain like alcohol. Uh, Yar is in uh, Troy's quarters. Trying on her clothes. Which is a delightful scene. I don't disapprove. I liked where this is going. Man, I'm not going to lie to you. This... I liked where this was going. Well, I think, <laughs> the, I think the show was meant to appeal to a new generation of Star Trek viewers. <laughs> and that just happened to be one way they did it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, y'all! <laughs> Anyway, uh, but Troy is a snitch. Troy tells Picard that Yar is, like, messed up. And in the middle of their, like, fun, you know. Uh, Troy communicates to the captain that Yar has whatever's infected the crew. Or yeah. intoxicated the yeah. crew. And then Yar goes on her walkabout. Hip swinging. Man, you can't tell by Gra the way I'm moving. <laughs> grabs the first blue man. shirt she can find and starts making out with him. That, yeah, that yeah. was delightful. Uh, this, the the this crew, Lieutenant Yar, I like this character. The the crew at this point is definitely starting to be infected because we're seeing people in the background doing bizarro things like right. making out with each other, drinking for sure. Uh, so it's clear that the infection is spreading among the crew in a in a in a new way for sure. Yeah, and then uh, Wesley does like a creep face like. <laughs> Anyways, Wesley does like a creep face that would like make Jack Nicholson proud in The Shining. Here's he's Johnny doing this like wacky face as he's like playing with his like tractor beam. Um, but he says that that uh, his mom is stunting his emotional growth, and then he says it's like hot in here, which is like the. And then I think we hear a whoosh. Also. Yep. He uh, he definitely has been infected, and uh, uh, Doctor Crusher is realizing that Wesley is infected. Right, right. And then uh, Data downloads uh, Tchaikovsky's database, the ship Tchaikovsky. Solkovsky. Uh, and they say that the star was supposed to implode in like 41 minutes, which I'm like, why didn't it implode? Well, right. that's, that's exactly what uh, Captain Picard said. Yeah. Uh, he said, why so soon? Which I think is a, is a hint that he's being... Affected by the the sickness that's going around. Yeah. But then Data comments, Sir, the Sokovsky has been in the star's orbit for eight months before we arrived. Right. So it's right, not so right. sudden. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Wesley shows up again. He is very sweaty. And he... Uh, they, they send uh, Shinoda out and they, they send out... Uh, oh, no. Yar first, like, first we hear... They show a scene from Engineering... And you hear Picard's voice come over the intercom, and it says, uh, Chief Engineer, report to the bridge. And so the Chief Engineer walks off. Right. And then in walks Wesley, and Picard's voice comes over the intercom and says, uh, Assistant Chief Engineer, please report to the bridge. And uh, Shimoda says, well, we can't have the Chief and the Assistant Chief out of the room at the same time. And Wesley says, don't worry about it. I understand how everything is going here. If anything goes wrong, I'll go ahead and give you a call. Right. And then he shakes Shimoda's hand, high pitched whooshing. Shimoda goes up to the bridge, and Wesley, drunk Wesley, clearly wants to, like, play engineer. Like, that's, like, while Yar wants to make out with people, Wesley wants to play around in engineering. So, so is it like, like, they're, it's having them be, like, their drunk selves? Yeah, like, like they're, what they're, they want they're expressing when they're, like, their true 
their true self, their their inner desire, their innermost desires. Okay. Their drunk self is a good way to put it. Okay. Um. Cheers, by the way, to this episode. <laughs> so, it's kind of interesting, actually, how they, uh, like, call back to the, like, lore and, like, like actual history of the previous show. And they just treat that as canon. Did you say lore? That's going to come in later. In fact, I did. Uh, but... Yeah, they actually, like, name-check James T. Kirk, and, like, when, like, Riker's doing his, like, investigation into, like... Oh, and the, the, the old Enterprise is flashing on the screen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that they're basically saying, this happened on the old Enterprise. And in this TV show that happened in 1960-fucking-whatever. Yeah, well, that's what's so... I don't know what it is. So, I don't know. 1969, but that's yeah. so... That's, it's kind of like the scene with nice. Dr. McCoy, where he's 137 years old... And, and and when the the ship that's leaving is the Excelsior, I remember now from uh, from Star Trek, uh, uh, the Wrath of Khan, and then the Search for Spock. Yeah, in Star Trek: The Search for Spock. Uh, there's a brand new ship that is so awesome that they're going to decommission the Enterprise, and that ship yeah. is the Excelsior, which is the ship that, that you just see on screen that, that Admiral Bones. Had had flown away on. Oh. So, so it's another callback. But then they went back to the Enterprise in episode number two. I find it I find it awesome that they're making these little uh, uh, callbacks to the original series. Without, I don't think they're being overtly, you know, like like nostalgic. They're just making these little callbacks, and yeah. I, I really appreciate that. I do too. I, I do too. I, I it reminds me a lot of how they've treated the new uh, Star Wars franchise. Yeah, like they've right. done, they've done the nostalgia right. And yes, for the most oh, part, I point. feel like they've really done it right. They're like, okay, if if we just stick to strict nostalgia, like Han Solo would have never happened. We would we would have right. stuck with Flash Gordon. Yeah, you know. Yeah, if if you're gonna be like just a strict like everything older is better, like you never get anything new. You know oh, what I, I mean? Oh, I love that perspective. You wouldn't have got Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. Hey, future podcast idea, a watch through of all eight Star Treks or Star Wars episodes leading up to the December release of episode nine. That'd be fun. Yeah. 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 yeah let's do okay, it. You can cut but, that out, by the way. Yeah, but, we'll yeah. throw it in. Okay. Uh, is this like a weird social commentary based on like the like Ronald Reagan like say no to drugs shit? Like oh. is is there a element of that? That's an excellent point. 80s, I mean, they're, man. They're exploring an infection that essentially gets everybody drunk, including a, a minor, including a kid. Yeah. Oh. And the kid oh, like, is, oh. is basically like, he just oh, wants to play oh. Legos, right? Like, that's his yeah. whole thing. He <laughs> wants to play Legos with the Enterprise. Yeah. That's fascinating, man. I think that think? could very well be the case. Absolutely. I mean, if there's anyone who's interested in uh, social commentary, it's Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. What, what do you think about the... War on drugs. Uh, <laughs> I think there are uh, more nonviolent drug offenders locked up and costing us money than uh, we ever uh, even could imagine. And not only is it costing us money and resources and valuable space for actual violent offenders, but it's... Um, I don't know. That's a that's a complex socio political discussion that that bleeds off into the military industrial industrial complex. Dust off, guys. A communist confirmed. <laughs> All right. So uh, Wesley is uh, fucked up. He's talking about wanting dessert before and after every meal. He's taken over engineering, and his whole purpose is to do what every teenager wants, which is to not eat nutritious food but dessert. Uh, and then Data has a limerick about uh, a, a young lady from Venus. Well, what's hilarious is uh, Worf reports, Sir, there are multiple reports on decks 10 through 35 of strange behavior. And the captain is like, what kind of behavior? And Data's like, yes, there is a shuttle operator in the holding area in the, in the, in the shuttle bay Reporting a limerick, I don't understand, sir. There once was a woman from Venus who had a body shaped like... Engineering! Anyways, Picard shuts her down. Uh, Data is very confused by what's happening. 
Uh, Yar is awesome here. She's like talking about how she avoided the rape gangs. You know, she was abandoned at five. Like she was 15 when she was escaped. This was amazing character development. This was a great, great scene for Lieutenant Yar. I loved this scene. So then, yes, Data calls on uh, Lieutenant Yar. And uh, she asks him, uh, you know, what, what he's capable of. And he says, I'm capable of a lot. And she uh, takes him up on that offer. Cause she's oh, all, you're a jewel. Yeah, because she's all fucked up. So after telling that dirty limerick, uh, uh, Captain Picard immediately realizes that there's a shipwide emergency. And he says, I need to speak to my chief of security right now. And all of a sudden, you hear Yar's voice come over the PA and say, Keep your britches on, Captain. <laughs> this is Lieutenant Yar. <laughs> and, of course, thinking that Data, being an android, is immune to such uh, intoxications, he says, Data, go to Lieutenant Yar's quarters and take care of her. Right away. And he says, Yes, sir. And, of course, stands up and walks off the bridge and goes and takes care of Lieutenant Yar. Uh, Troy uh, calls Riker uh, Bill. <laughs> She, she gets uh, horny for Riker, essentially. And we then, do know uh, they have a history from... Yes. Just like... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. From from that opening episode where she calls him Imzadi or some shit. Yep, her Imzadi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, she, she gets horny for him, and uh, he gets infected, which we know from the whoosh moment. The, yes, yep. Uh, Riker then infects uh, Dr. Crusher... And Crusher fucking finally realizes exactly what's happening. She she is the one who finally like figures it out, like right. puts two and two together. Um, and this actually is kind of one of the things I was going to ask you about about the show. Is this like, is this essentially like a mystery show that like somebody finally puts it together? Like, is this is Star Trek basically Murder She Wrote, where the Angela Lansbury like rotates around mm. to different people. That's very interesting. Uh, the 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 way that I would answer is to say that, like most good shows, the cast of characters encounters a problem early on in the episode, and spends the episode trying to solve that problem. This one is particularly particularly murder she wrote ish, right? And they're not all like that. Okay, but they do involve. Some routine mission. Don't your, worry about your it. Walls, your walls. <laughs> the walls are bleeding, man! <laughs> what are you feeding me? So it involves a routine mission that is then interrupted by some catastrophic event right. that nearly decimates the crew that they have to solve. One of the things I really like about Star Trek, both the original series and Next Generation and subsequent versions, is they include routine missions. It's not this, every episode is some monumental, impossibly uh, uh, against all odds event, but they actually have routine shit going on every now and then. Right, right. Uh, Wesley is in control of the ship on account of the uh, Thikovsky. Thikovsky, T-H-I-C-C hyphen Ofsky infection. Um... He, he's very drunk. Uh, Wesley is very drunk. As Picard is trying to talk him into uh, giving him the ship back. And failing. And he's, he's, he's talking to him like he's uh, scolding a child. Indeed. Yeah. As I, I suppose Wesley is. Uh, the star's collapsing. Uh, Dr. Crusher is trying to fight through the onset of drunkenness. Well, it's which is something I relate to very much. What's interesting is it's important to realize that each person is experiencing their drunkenness differently, right? Yeah. We've seen that Yar is manifesting her experiences as a young woman. Yeah. Uh, as a young girl. So we, And now we're seeing that, that Dr. Crusher, is manife her drunkenness is manifesting itself in, I need to research the cure. I need to... And, of course, she ends up getting distracted by something else. But, but initially, every, like, uh, like Wesley, he goes to engineering and wants to play Legos with the starship because mm -hmm. he's a kid. Well, Dr. Crusher just wants to do more research and figure out the cure. And she, like, like, in a drunken stupor, 
has to solve this problem, and she's she's really trying to dial in and figure it out. Have you ever had that happen to you when you were smashed? When you were like, like, uh, you, where, where you get drunk and you're just like, I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna tunnel in on this thing and I have to finish it. In like school or whatever. Yes, I like, have tunneled into yeah. many things when I've been Tell drunk. Tell the camera. Tell the camera. I have camera. tunneled into many things when I've been drunk. <laughs> He's not wrong. That's a good, good with purpose and intent. <laughs> All right, so Data like lumbers onto the bridge, and he has some like human talk where like he's like, "If you prick me, do I not leak?" Well, it's if you're a human, it's if you do, do I not bleed? This but is actually says, very important. Do I not leak? This may be some of the most important dialogue in the episode, if I may. Tell the camera, man. I will tell the camera, yeah. but first I'm going to interrupt you, which yeah. is why I'm addressing you. Yeah. So this is some of the most important dialogue in the episode. Those of you familiar with Star Trek, or those of you who've been paying attention so far that are unfamiliar with Star Trek, may say, how on earth can an android be infected with drunkenness? And essentially what he's doing a good question. is he's taking a minute to explain that his, even though he has a biomechanical body, he has liquid coursing through it. Like if oil? You, if you prick me, something? do I not leak? And if you remember earlier in the episode, the infection was in a carbon-based liquid and how it reacted to the humans, uh, uh, the, the water content in their bodies. Oh, shit. And so this is essentially data explaining to the audience in a really fucking awesome trekky kind of way why he's infected by the virus as well. That's actually pretty fucking like subtle writing. That's actually yeah. really good. Like that's because he makes it sound like some. I'm an android on a poetic drunken rant, but I'm also telling the audience yeah, how this works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but anyway, yeah. Doctor Crusher comes up and asks for Picard, but she ends up going to a private room with Data, and uh, Crusher wants the D. Picard. She goes to the private room with Picard. Yes, that's right. And she wants she wants the genre, Picard's yeah. D. Uh, definitely their past is coming coming up here, and Jean-Luc is trying his best to fight it, but even he says, not now. Which is a great, great writing. Great writing. It's how the sensible person yeah. postpones the thing that, that's going to break them, is to say, not now. So He doesn't say no, he says, not now. Everyone gets mad when I say that he's Wesley's dad. He's not. Yeah, he's not. Everybody gets angry, but I'm not angry. He's I think he clearly he clearly is. He's Sorry. not. In fact, they say in the first episode that he was the one responsible for returning uh, Wesley's dad's body quote to unquote, the family. Quote unquote. Yeah, father. why should we trust the characters when we can come up with our own version <laughs> of what happened? It's cool. Yeah, more power to you, bro. You're familiar with astronomy. Uh, stars explode? Yeah, stars, sometimes they explode, sometimes bigger stars become littler stars. And that's what happened. And the I super under, giant became a white dwarf. I, I understand star explosions to not just be a once in a lifetime event, but a once event. Yeah. Extremely Big rare. Big time. Do they seem like abnormally unsurprised or unimpressed with the fact that they're witnessing an exploding star. It's, it's a little wild. Yeah. I, I think that uh, previous generations were not uh, quite like under, you know, understanding of the idea that like space is big, dog. So you space think, is really so, big. So essentially the writers are trying to tell us just how much these people explore by the fact that an exploding star is... Yeah. Eh, Dude, we're going to go... Check out this explosion, dude! Star. In space, in, in in any space show, it's like everything is truncated. Yeah, that's also true of any show, by the way. Right? Yeah. Like, like 100%. talk about like twenty four, where like he fights like twelve people in twenty four hours. Yeah, I fucking hate that. You know, show. that's yeah. that's a, very much like a space show. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But anyway, then Picard is uh, sweaty. Oh, he he's very got, sweaty. He's got the infection. He's he, got the he, sickness. He needs Riker to. Uh, to say, take us out of here. And uh, we cut to uh, the engineer playing with uh, Wesley. He's playing with Legos. Yeah, the microchips. Yeah. And then uh, Carol Brady from the Brady Bunch comes in. <laughs> That's and, right. uh, My third grade teacher. And she's like, these are control clips. 
and somebody has yanked out the chips. She, Carol Brady says. Yeah. That's what happened. They're essential, I'm sorry, they're that's what essential for c- controlling the chip. If and you Carol can Brady see, you said can see it, the banks fine. and banks of control chips, and one section of them has them all pulled out. That's fucked up. Yeah, dude. Especially since it was the assistant chief engineer who pulled them out and is playing Legos with them. Dude. That Bad dude's juju. That, dude, that dude's fired. Yeah, uh they they should all be yeah, reprimanded severely. Anyways, Riker is yelling at Data to uh, fix his shit. Data, fix your shit! That's direct quote, by the way. Uh, Data works very fast. He's honestly doing, like, the 2001, like, taking out shit and putting it into other shit in the, like, slots. Data, it looks we like- have seven or eight minutes. How long will it take to complete yeah. that task? It will take slightly longer before the ship is destroyed. Yes, he's very honest. And as he's he very honest about putting how, the chips away. how long it will take. It's it's actually pretty tremendous. Um, Picard and Crusher are both uh, fucked up. Messes up their obvious sexual tension. Where like they're obviously like they never they, breached the tension though. Sort of like Yar and Data actually did it. Yeah. Uh, Riker and uh, Troy. Yeah. And Crusher and Picard never actually did anything untoward and I think that's very important because so many shows and you know that you know how much I fucking hate this yeah. so many shows rely on drama to try and like keep people interested and they, what they did is they halted the breaks before drama could could take place for sure and I love yeah. that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Wesley uh, is doing some shit about reversing the fields uh, Crusher's vaccination works for everyone um <laughs> It makes Crusher and Picard not want to fuck anymore. Which is... I mean, is that good for them or bad for them? It's good know. for them. Uh, yeah, okay. Fair enough. We're only on episode two. Uh, Picard goes around smashing everybody with the, the vaccination. They got away from the meteor, and uh, it was essentially Data and Wesley who got them out. Yes. Their combined uh, abilities. Yeah, Data... It, what's interesting is Data put the control chips back, but it was Wesley who gave him the extra minute or two that he needed by linking his repulsor beam into the ship's computer yeah. and shoving off of the Sokovsky, uh, giving them enough time, giving Data enough time to put all the control chips back so they could warp out of there. And what's really awesome about this is this interesting tension between uh, Picard wanting to reprimand Wesley for being a drunken fool who took over engineering to play Legos, and being the guy who actually saved the Enterprise. Right. And and I it's just it's good it's good stuff. And then Yar told Data that their whole sex scene never happened. And much and, and much like most of most of us men react, where Data's <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, uh, Picard, in his uh, final you know moments on the episode, said that it is very important to avoid temptation. Yeah, they got a good crew if they can avoid temptation. You know, I yeah, I don't know. It, it, it feels very eighties to me, like like the whole like say no to drugs thing. But in in another way, it's like, yeah, that's kind of a good philosophy for life. Actually, you you probably should avoid most of your temptations. And it will result in, like, a productive, you know... There have been times in my know. life, as a, as a cook, a line cook, or a server or bartender, where I took a, I, I've taken a drink and worked after having taken a drink. If I worked on a starship, I definitely would avoid temptation. Right, right, right. So I'm okay, I'm okay with the... With the episode's lesson. I didn't think it was, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? When nursery rhymes always have a, a, a point at the end where they're trying to convince you of a... I didn't think it was moralizing. This episode yeah. did not feel like it was moralizing. But I did think it was damn bold of Star Trek to take an episode in this particular direction on its second episode. Yeah. Not four seasons yeah. after we've gotten to know everybody and we can have a little play around episode... But on its second episode. Yeah. 
And I don't know if that speaks to how bold they are. I don't know how, if it speaks to how tenuous their contract was. And they're just like, fuck it, we're going to do the naked now. <laughs> well, Jordan, do you have any final thoughts on the quality of the episode? I as think, an episode of television. I think the, the writing and acting is as good as it can be. I think any, any drawbacks to... 1987 Star Trek The Next Generation have to do with their budget. Plain and simple. I think that they got the best people to do it. The writing is spot on. And as you will see, they address socio-political issues that will impact humanity for a lifetime. And that is Gene Roddenberry's purpose. Yeah, and, and even going beyond that, just to like a storytelling point of view, like I, so the the 2004 uh, Battlestar Galactica remake the is, new is BSG, one of my yeah. favorite. It's one of my favorite shows ever made, and like their second episode, to me, just tonally, like just as like a storytelling medium, felt a lot like this episode. Oh, interesting. Okay. It it was like it, it, I think it was called like Eleven Seconds, and like it was built around this idea of like. Oh, every eleven seconds, some um, you know new human dies or whatever. Uh huh. But it it felt really a lot like this episode to me. Like just even devoid of the politics, you know. Which well, I, one thing that this episode did that I find really fascinating is draw you into the moment by making everything happen. I mean, you really feel the sense that it's happening live. Yeah. You have yeah. you, you get your you're drawn in in a way that makes you feel every moment as the crew experiences it. Yeah. yeah it yeah. doesn't have the... It doesn't feel rehearsed. It yeah. doesn't feel scripted. It feels like it's unfolding as you experience it. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was a uh, great episode of television. And um, I, I continue to not be surprised that this uh, TV show is excellent. Right. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. You got anything else? That's it. Fuck it. Well, in that That's case... That's all for now. Uh, we're about to get out of here, kiddos. As always, I would like to thank... That's the camera right there. I would like to thank my buddy Tim Hogan, a.k.a. Funkbox, for the use of his music. Um, I would like to thank anybody who wa actually watches this. Uh, until next time, we'll, we'll be back here with another uh, review of Episode 3, apparently entitled Code of Honor. Uh, until that happens... I am the world-renowned historian. Be good, kiddos. I am out. Hey, and thank you for listening. This was the Dust Off Guy, along with the world-renowned historian. Please stay tuned. As you can see, there are people who are fans of football as well as Star Trek. And for those of us who get along and identify in such a way, please listen up for what will be some excellent reviews of football games. NFL season is right around the corner. I'm very excited about it. It doesn't have to be the Eagles specifically, but we will be talking football as well as your favorite Star Trek and sci-fi. Thank you very much, folks. Have a great night.